There just is no easy path through military retirement. Hey, I am Chuck the Bureaucrat, and this is a cornerstone video that I have really been wanting to make for a, for a long time. It's an overview of the major events of military retirement organized as a timeline. And I gotta be honest, one of the reasons that it's taken me so long to put this together is because the labyrinth that is military retirement is so complicated with so many individual steps that it, it just defies simplification. I've talked before about how there are different programs that are managed by different agencies that provide different kinds of support to veterans at different points in their life, and that all of these are just dumped together like some kit that you have to assemble for yourself. This whole situation is not a recipe for success, and when you try to put it on a simple timeline, it just turns into a cluster. But at the same time, we need a summary that's more than just a, a, a simplified summary. So let's walk through a more detailed timeline together. To do this, I'm going to break actions down into seven categories. Admin, Education, Employment, Financial, Healthcare, Housing, and your VA claim. My thinking about these different categories is that they're largely independent of one another. I mean, your VA claim doesn't really have much to do with house hunting. But within a category, there might be programs from different agencies that do have interactions that you ought to be concerned about. For example, there might be an interplay for you between Veterans Group Life Insurance and the Survivor Benefit Program. Now, the next important part of any timeline are the, are the milestones or the phase lines. Of course, there is going to be a very precise moment when you officially retire, your retirement date. Some events are going to happen before this, some after it, and some are going to live in very narrow windows around it. Another major milestone that you're going to care about is 30 days after your retirement. In fact, I'm going to suggest that there's a, a bunch of retirement actions that you don't have to do immediately after retirement, but it's a good idea to focus on getting them done in the first 30 days. The next milestone is when you start terminal leave. There are some special rules that are going to cover you while you're still on active duty, but in terminal leave, and they're going to interact with some of your options. Now, I'm going to keep moving towards the left-hand side of the chart, and I just want to point out that as we do this, these milestones become fuzzier and less specific. Personally, I think there's an important point about eight months before you actually retire. Ideally, that comes after you have gotten your retirement orders, but and there's no guarantee that that's going to happen. And then you have the official date where you request your retirement, and that is entirely different than the, the vague and non-specific point where you start asking yourself, should I or, or even can I retire? All right, I want to start walking you through some of the events that are administrative in nature. Mostly, this is going to have to do with actions that your service has to accomplish, or, or things they set policy for or require of you so that you can get out. And here is one of the most important and frustrating aspects of this whole military transition timeline. Many of the things that we're going to talk about, like health care or education or employment, they're for you. They are for your benefit. And the government, frankly, could care less if you get the best outcome. But these administrative tasks, the service benefits from them. And the service wants to make very certain that these things are accomplished. Even though you personally may not really benefit from these tasks, you'll notice that as you go through your transition, there is a lot of emphasis on them and a lot of glossing over the things that actually affect you and your family. Okay, this whole process is going to start with your initial thinking about whether you, you should or could retire. 
And there are three fundamental questions that you're going to have to consider as you move forward. What are you going to do? Where are you going to do it? And when should you make your transition? Often, two pieces of administrative data that you're going to have to check early on in this process are whether or not you have any remaining active duty service obligation and whether you've completed the paperwork necessary to transfer the 9-11 GI Bill to your dependents. That 9-11 GI Bill, it comes with an active duty service obligation. So if you haven't already transferred at least a portion to your beneficiaries, start now. I have literally known people who have been stuck on active duty because they waited to do this transfer until the last moment. And while we're at it, check your people. Counsel everybody you know to start the transfer as soon as possible. Next is the issue of your final PCS. Some people retire to avoid a final PCS. Some people arrange their final PCS so that they end up close to a place where they want to be for post-military employment. And some people didn't realize that their last PCS was their final one. One consideration when thinking about this is there might be an active duty service obligation associated with a final PCS. So timing matters. One of the high profile events that you're going to go through in this whole process is the transition assistance program and the retiree planning seminar. These are good programs, but remember that you have to customize them to meet your own needs. You're not going to get spoon fed success. And in fact, if you do get spoon fed anything, it's going to benefit the service and not necessarily your family. So it's a good idea to take these classes before you decide to retire and then after you actually have your retirement orders. Trust me, the information that you're interested in from these briefs is going to shift between those two time points. Now, you will notice that I put the Boots to Business logo along this timeline. Boots to Business is a small business administration class that's designed to help people who are transitioning out of the military and starting a business. My experience has been that a surprising number of retirees actually function more like businesses than they would expect. So it's worth taking a look at. And in a little while, I'm going to recommend that you create a business bank account so that you can save that six months of pay that everybody keeps talking about. The next administrative hoop that you are going to get thrown through is clearing your unit and your post. And all of that is driving towards your last day on active duty when you finally get that precious DD-214. Well, number one, I'm going to recommend that you do a little bit of prep work here. Check with the provost marshal that there isn't some kind of legal garbage following you around. And number two, if you can, turn in any equipment that you don't need as soon as possible. And then there are two final thoughts about timing your final out. Do not count on completing your paperwork on the very last day and then getting in your car and driving into the sunset. Build a day of padding into your plan so that you've got time for one last goat rope before this whole thing's over. And if you're transitioning around the holidays, don't be surprised if some of the offices that you need to talk to, they're just closed. The last piece of administrative stuff that you need to deal with is getting your retired ID. You want to get this thing as soon as possible after retirement, but don't count on just being able to walk in. Schedule an appointment months in advance. And quite frankly, I would stop in like a day or two before the appointment and make sure that you have all of the correct paperwork. Oh, and make sure that they understand that this is an initial issue of a retired ID. All right, the next consideration is house hunting. And this is particularly house hunting where you're going to be moving immediately after retirement. Now, I've been a little vague about the timing of house hunting. Some people might prioritize where they want to live over 
and what they want to do, and as a result, they can start their house hunting much earlier. Other people might have to wait until they get a job or get accepted to a school to know where they're going so that they can do the house hunting. The important aspect here is that the timing of your house hunting is going to impact your leave plan. And there's some administrative absences that you can take advantage of for house hunting if you already have your retirement orders. So while you're going to have to take action to get the timing right for house hunting, it can be a big rock in your retirement rucksack. Closely related to house hunting is a VA loan. Now, broadly speaking, you can take advantage of the veterans home loan program anytime you want. But your house hunting timeline might be influenced by whether or not you're already using your VA loan. And there's additional paperwork and steps associated with a home loan that might have to be factored into your timeline. All right, now for the big one, financial matters. Before you even drop your paperwork, get a good estimate of what your pension is going to be. The Department of Defense has an okay suite of calculators, but these can be kind of a pain in the neck to use. I would recommend that you familiarize yourself with the underlying rules of how a pension is calculated, do your own estimate, and then if they don't match, figure out why. Usually it's going to be a mistake that you made, but the last thing you want to be doing is going into this important decision-making process with incorrect assumptions about how large your pension is going to be. Now, as you move forward towards your retirement, keep an eye on this estimate. It shouldn't be changing very much, but watch out for someone who's entering data and making a mistake and screwing everything up. Then, be aware that DFAS is going to create something called a retiree account statement that's going to take the place of your LES. Setting that up takes like 30 to 45 days, and then you start getting your pension with payment in arrears. Now, you have probably noticed that this whole process has a bunch of important financial decisions all jumbled together and you're going to need a professional financial advisor as soon as possible, preferably well before you start the retirement process and have to be making these decisions. You're going to have to have a conversation about survivor benefit program versus term life insurance because you got to make that survivor benefit decision before you go on terminal leave. Under certain circumstances, you're going to need to take a look at veterans group life insurance. And this is one of those cases where if you're going to elect VGLI, it's a good idea to get it done in those first 30 days of retirement. I mean, you can't take action until after you're retired, so it's, it's easy to let these things slip by. Earlier, I made a comment about you know, creating the simplest business structure possible, getting a business account and using that to hold the the cash reserves that you're setting aside in order to go through your retirement. You should take a look at your TSP account, and in particular, you want to think about whether or not you want to take a loan against it, because you have to do that before you retire. And notice that this might be a way to finance the down payment for a home loan. Once you do retire, the question is, do you want to roll your TSP into some other retirement account? And finally, what about your will and power of attorneys? Well, you're on active duty. You can usually get these kind of things done for free, but you might also choose to wait until after retirement for a more strategic moment. Next, you have your VA claim, and that is closely associated with your pension. You are going to need a VSO. And remember that VSO stands for a Veteran Service Organization and a Veteran Service Officer. My recommendation is that you want a Veteran Service Officer who is the right fit for you. So you want to start that search early. Technically, if you submit your VA claim within 180 to 90 days of your retirement, you should get your benefits at retirement under the the Benefits Delivery at Discharge program. But with the current backlog, 
I wouldn't hold my breath. Currently processing is like 125 days. Now, there are two ways that this VA claim is going to kind of bungle up your timeline. Number one, the VA is going to schedule you for appointments to meet with their doctors. And when they do, they're going to be really, really inflexible about dates. So if you're planning to take some big family vacation during terminal leave, and I recommend that you do, your VA claim might be impacted by your availability. The other thing that your VA claim is going to have to do is it's going to have to like sync up with your pension. If you qualify for a VA disability and CRSC or CRDP, then there might be some minor corrections that have to happen between the VA and DFAS. Okay, the next is health care, and here's the big secret. While you're on active duty, the Department of Defense automatically enrolls you in three programs, healthcare, dental, and vision. When you retire, you have to make these decisions, and it is not a single action. The big one is TRICARE, your basic health care. You have 90 days from retirement to enroll in TRICARE and not have a gap in coverage. So this is one of those high priority tasks that you need to get done in the first 30 days of retirement. Oh, and as far as I can tell, you need your retired ID to enroll in TRICARE. So it's kind of associated with that getting your retired ID piece. Then when it comes to enrolling for dental and vision, you have to go through an entirely different website and it is a much narrower window for enrollment. On the education front, there can be a lot of details that are unique to your own personal situation. Particularly, if you are planning on going to college or university, you want to start fleshing out the milestones for your education plan early on. Are there exams that you need to take? Are there application deadlines? When do classes start? If you're applying to different schools, will your transition plan be affected by where you get accepted? Are there VA education programs that you intend to apply for, and do they have their own deadlines? I only have one line here, but if you get on this path, <laughs> you need to keep your head up and your eyes on the horizon. And then there's at least two programs that you might consider taking advantage of while you're still on active duty. You got the Department of Defense's Skillbridge program, and you got the VA's Vet Tech program. Both of these programs can only be done within the last 180 days that you're on active duty, although you can enroll in vet tech afterwards too. So while they are great programs, they happen to overlap with some serious crunch time in your transition. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna pause here before we go into employment. Does this feel overwhelming? Well, if it does, that's okay. Every month, hundreds of people just like you make it to the other side of this process happy, proud of their service, and quite frankly, less stressed. You don't have to understand 100% of this today, and the truth of the matter is that some of this isn't even going to matter in your unique situation. So we're going to get through this together. Okay, last one, employment. Let's start with something really simple. Create your resume before you even request retirement. You do that first transition assistance program, and then you hammer out a 65% solution for your resume. And from there, all you're going to do is revise and improve. Next, you're going to want to start building your LinkedIn network. Now, I got to be honest. This is kind of a slow process, so not only are you going to want to start early, but you're going to want to be consistent. Transitioning military, get a free one-year subscription to LinkedIn Premier, but I would recommend waiting until you're about eight months away from retirement before taking advantage of this. That way, it's still active a couple months after your retirement date. Next, you're going to want to do a civilian job search and probably a government civilian job search. The thing to keep in mind here is that the 
government civilian job search. It's, it's a slower process, it takes more time, and I would recommend starting that one sooner. I mean, you can get hired to a contract job really fast. One thing you do want to be prepared for is if you're going to work for the government or as a contractor in a government space while you're on terminal leave, you're going to need what's called an ethics letter. You get this letter from your command's legal office, but you have to have a job offer before they can write the letter, so timing can get tricky. The last thing I'll mention is that people are going to recommend that you buy a civilian wardrobe and that you attend some job fairs. I'm going to suggest that you sprinkle these events throughout your timeline. As far as the clothing goes, you don't know exactly what kind of fashions you need, and you don't want to dress like you bought all of your clothes at the same place on the same day. And apparently your waistline gets the idea that it's retiring too, so those fine-fitting clothes that you got a year and a half before you retired, well, six months after you retire, they might not fit so good. Something similar goes with these job fairs. I mean, I would say that they are kind of strange places and you have to figure out how to make the best use of them. The way to do that is over time, gradually, and with practice. All right, so that is the timeline rundown. Now, if you want something that's a little more whimsical, watch this video to see what John Wick can teach you about your military transition.